think I've seen or caught students cheating on exams only only once or twice. I think that's kind of rare. But I think on assignments they, they cheat actually a lot more often. Um, you know, not that often, most of the time not. not. But, but I think it's easier to cheat uh, during an assignment. And I think sometimes you don't even know you're cheating when there's an assignment. Sometimes you don't realize that you've copied too much off the internet. And that's, you, you might not even be aware that that's, that's actually academic dishonesty. According to the journalist Kalle Kniville, increased amount of students are being suspected of cheating at the University of Lund. Since 1990, the number of cheating reports has constantly risen. In fact, it has pretty much increased from year to year since 2005. Last year, the most common form of cheating with almost half of the reports at Lund was plagiarism in assignments. So what do you think could cause these uh, students to cheat? Yeah, yeah. So I think, I think if you choose to cheat and you know you're cheating, uh, I think it's, it, it could be any number of things. But I think one of the things that it is is that you're... So, so first of all, it's fear. Fear of, of failing or fearing of not doing as well as necessary to do whatever it is you need to do. Um, and that, that, that emotion or that fear becomes greater than other things you value, so such as you know, uh, ethics and, and sort of uh, you know, some sort of moral conduct. Um, so that's probably the biggest reason why people cheat. They, they also might justify it because they feel like they've been hard done by another way. So maybe they felt like something was unfair for another reason. Maybe they thought something the teacher did or something. So they feel like it's actually just cancelling out some other inequality. Um, so that, that might be the way to justify it. Um, yeah, I'd say that's the main reason why people cheat. Yeah. Sometimes exams get leaked before they even take place. In Sweden, the national tests, official exams organized by the government, have been leaked multiple times, the loss of which happened as soon as last year. As a result, the Swedish Education Act are looking to implement stricter rules. Additionally, it has severe consequences for students. The consequences for a student found guilty of cheating on a test or assignment gives the teacher a right to fail the student on that test, but also in the whole course if given enough reason to do so. In cases of repeated cheating, the student can get prohibited from continuing to the course. In terms of the national tests that Sweden have for the year 6, 9 and all high school year students, the consequences is no longer only on the student who cheated, but also on the whole years in Sweden taking the tests. The cheating results in all tests being nullified and all students won't get graded in the section of these tests. This clearly shows a larger impact not only on the cheating student who fails the course, but also on all the other thousands of students who won't get a grade on a test that they spent hours studying for. We just want to ask, uh, what are your experiences with uh, cheating in exams? Uh, well, I, I usually don't personally cheat that much. Uh, but I know several people who try to cheat a lot. Um, uh, some because uh, they're just lazy and have a study for the test. For example, I had an incident when I was in uh, middle school uh, where I made a speech and uh, it was really good and I got a, a, an A from it. And uh, my, a friend of mine asked, oh, can I just borrow your speech um, and kind of just make it my own and I was like okay fine sure and she ended up just copying my entire speech in front of the teacher and the teacher didn't notice but and eventually she got an A and that's I think that's uh, uh, cheating in a form of laziness she just yeah. didn't want to do the work now uh, for example, I go to high school and in this high school everyone works really really hard everyone has their own dreams of what they want to become or what university they want to enter so when I see cheating here it's more of like we want to help each other because it's so so difficult to get an A and uh, for example in the test you can see for example the more popular kids who really, really have this pressure from their parents you know showing each other they grade you no know, their their questions and trying to help each other and actually once I, I was really stuck on this question and I didn't know what to do so I just looked around um, looked at the clock and was like, okay, this is soon over, I don't know how to answer this. And then one of 
the girls who I usually don't talk too much, but is very loved by everyone. She just showed me her test, like turning the paper and like trying to get eye contact with me. And actually, thanks to her, I was able to raise my grade. So, from my experience with with cheating has been very very diverse, if you like that, for different reasons. Yeah. Yeah. So cheating seems to be a community where the students can relate to each other's situation and try to help each other in order to raise their grades for exams and assignments. Although, does these actions affect how their grade represents their actual knowledge? Yeah, yeah, this is a hard question. Does, yeah, does, do the, do the correct students get the correct grades? Um, so I think the good thing about most systems, uh, especially the Swedish system, maybe less so, let's say the IB system, is that is the your grade is determined by a uh, by like a bunch of different uh, assessments. Um, so th there's obviously variability in a single assessment. Um, and I think if you if you'd ask me, you know, do you think a grade of a single assessment is always correct to the performance? It probably is for most students, but but there's, there's still like quite a few where it's probably a bit off. But over the the averaging of a whole year um, and and w with increased diversity, then I think I think almost I think a vast majority of the time it's correct. Um, and also you notice patterns, right? So so if if a student does a, a lab report and a, and a test and some other thing, in general, as a generalization, people tend to get similar grades on all parts. So, so you end up honing in on, on something that doesn't feel like a mistake. Yeah. So yeah, I would say most of the time it's correct, is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. So after interviewing a student and a teacher, we, will, we want to find a cheater that we can find their perspective about these things about. So rumor says there is one here at this school right now, and we're going to try and catch the cheater so we can get an interview with them. Let's see how it goes. This is crucial information. We need this, okay? Okay, okay. We'll try. We'll see if he comes. Here he comes. Oh, he just comes. Hi, uh, excuse me? Excuse me? Yeah. Uh, do you want to ask some questions about cheating? Um, no, no, I'm good. Wait, no, no, no. What? Have, have you? Have you? Have you? Have you? So unfortunately, we couldn't get in touch with the person who was rumored to be a cheater. But we can assume from his behavior that there is something suspicious about him. This also agrees with what Kalle Knivile discovered, which is that more and more students are being suspected of cheating. While it is theorized that this increase in reports could be because of more advanced methods of catching cheaters, it is nonetheless still a very relevant issue with large amounts of cheating reports every year. We have now discussed both the causes and consequences of cheating. It can be caused by lack of time and the pressure to perform well in school. This pressure sprouts from both parents and the standards of society. The grades today have a too big of an impact on our motivation to gain knowledge. This further encourages students to cheat, as it is part of the game. So can we actually reduce the amount of cheating in school? Yeah, yes. Yeah. So I, I think there are, there are a few ways you can reduce cheating, and some are better than others. So the, the sort of shortcut way, which I don't think is a very good solution, is just increased invigilation and in increased consequences. So just like make it <laughs> override the fear of failure with the fear of being caught. Uh, um, now this I don't think is the right way, but it is a way. I, I think probably a better way is to, is to rather ingrain it in, in culture and, and education, which is obviously a lot harder. But if you can ingrain the, the value of learning and the value of education as the forefront reason to go to school and not make it that the f you, what you don't want is you don't want the first reason sorry let me find my words here you don't want that the main reason people go to school is to get a good grade because if the ultimate goal is to get a, an A then cheating is part of the game but if you make the, f the main goal to learn well now cheating is not part of the game so I think it's, it's all about dialing our motives and creating a culture where we are in school to learn, which is obviously what we tell people, but maybe uh, maybe the system isn't quite optimized yet, and, and there's still some problems that we end up focusing too much on letters and numbers. So yeah, I think that's the ultimate solution. 
Cheating seems to, in general, appear more often in written assignments than exams. This is because students plagiarize without the knowledge that it is academic dishonesty. The cheating is often caused by the pressure from expectations, and that the fear of performing poorly on an assignment is greater than the moral of not cheating. The perspective from the students differ from the views of the teachers. Students use cheating as a way to relate to each other's stress because they have this pressure to perform. This creates a community between students where they help each other during tests and assignments to help carry their weight together. The optimal solution to reduce cheating is to create a culture where learning is the goal rather than acquiring high grades. While cheating isn't a rightful answer, it is an inevitable consequence of our achievement-driven society.